Um, so would you please like to start by introducing yourself? Yeah, my name is uh, Colm Caulfield. I'm the new Head of Department of uh, the Department of Applied Maths and Theoretical Physics here at the University of Cambridge. And could you give us an overview of your research area and of your career so far? So I was uh, born in Coventry to an Irish family and then went to school in the Republic of Ireland and then I went to university as an undergraduate in the University of Ulster at Coleraine, just uh, on the north coast of uh, Northern Ireland. And then I came to do the famous course here, part three, uh, a long time ago, uh, in 1987, and then subsequently my PhD here, which was actually an industrially sponsored project, as well as having a college uh, uh, scholarship associated with it, because I was a European uh, student uh, coming in. Uh, and that project was on uh, hazards, hazards associated with dense gas releases uh, of, uh, you know, natural gas at uh, ferry ports was the, was the supposed, uh, was the industrial application of the project, but it was fundamentally then became, started my love affair with understanding how fluids of different uh, densities uh, and different properties go unstable, mix and become turbulent, uh, become turbulent and then mix and how their, their mixing process actually works. And then since 2005 I came back uh, uh, to Cambridge uh, and I have a joint appointment with the BP Institute uh, for Multiphase Flow and also the Department of Applied Maths and Theoretical Physics. So my research interest is really into how to make um, process, industrial processes efficient. A very traditional design of uh, industrial processes has been in um, optimizing a particular functional, a particular exercise usually to make something happen quickly or happen cheaply. But in the modern uh, era with the uh, climate uh, uh, crisis, for example, the actual thing you want to optimise is different. You want to be very sustainable, you want to uh, minimise the amount of pollutant you create, you want to uh, minimise the amount of energy that's required in the process. And so that very often is a fluid dynamical question. It is a question about how can I uh, perturb the flow or control the flow in a particular way to achieve the particular objective. But an even bigger part of my research, I guess, at the moment has been collaborating with uh, earth scientists and oceanographers to try and understand uh, the uh, circulation in the ocean. So I'm very interested in doing pen and paper calculations, idealized ex laboratory experiments, numerical simulations, and then also connecting with the real data, observational data, to constrain our models and to inform our models, to, to get a multidisciplinary team together to try and improve our parameterizations, the way we describe the large, how we've described for large-scale climate models, how turbulence, which is a controlling factor in this uh, heat transport in the ocean, how that, effect, how that is, should be modelled by being an applied mathematician, how it should be modelled in those larger scale systems that is actually based on the real physics, the real mathematics of what's, yeah. what's going on. So moving on to your new role, um, um, so what's your vision for the department for the next five and a bit years that you're going to be? Well, so, so this uh, d the d is called the Department of Applied Maths and Theoretical Physics and it has uh, world-class uh, strength in research in both applied maths and, and theoretical physics. And I think the next uh, decade in both those, the areas of applied mathematics and theoretical physics, it's enormously exciting uh, period. And speaking personally, one of the reasons it is so exciting is the confluence of such access to more data that allows us to understand uh, and to produce new mathematical models and interpret uh, the world. So, for example, the gravitational wave data, the um, data coming out of CERN, the um, exoplanet uh, information we're getting, the explosion of the amazing explosion in observational uh, astronomy, really is a huge opportunity on the theoretical physics side to really uh, uh, probe further understanding the, the physical world in, those, in, in that classical physics, not in that classical, definitely very ultimate modern, but the physics uh, uh, sense. And also in uh, more the applied mathematical uh, situation, the 
data science in this broad sense, the powers of machine learning and, and using mathematical algorithms to extract information from huge data streams, and those data streams can be associated with improving healthcare provision, uh, my particular interest improving the efficiency of uh, um, industrial processes and improving our description of the climate system, there, there is a real role to be played for uh, applied mathematicians in that. And then there's also, we ha I mean, you must remember of course, we have a, a, an outstanding um, world-class education system uh, here, both at the undergraduate, the master's level and the, the PhD level, and there is such opportunities to uh, uh, build on the really strong grounding we have there of the traditional uh, rigorous uh, mathematical training that we have such breadth and depth available here to then also be pointing these mathematicians towards these new areas uh, where those mathematical skills will be enormously uh, uh, valuable. So part of your mission then will be to to inform or direct students, um, make them aware of um, possibilities? So, so I think the, 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 um, what we have been uh, uh, doing is we are continually uh, reconsidering the syllabus that, uh, mm. that is available. That sort of uh, evolution of continual uh, critical evaluation and evolution of the uh, syllabus of what we teach, you, you, you mustn't get away from teaching you know, calculus, and, and you mustn't get away from uh, uh, teaching the uh, analysis and linear algebra, you know, that, that doesn't change. But then, the, as, since we have a, such a large uh, uh, group of uh, faculty all do, doing such uh, interesting work, and we have the opportunity for, you know, with our sister department, uh, the Department of Pure Maths and Mathematical Statistics, we have uh, uh, this very large uh, uh, final year in the undergraduate course, there's like 35 courses, and so though, that we can continually reconsider how we uh, uh, teach, and, and through the part three, which has like 70 or 80 different courses, we can then see, uh, seed, teach the brand new uh, stuff that's coming through, and also then see, well, do we think that that can play a useful role in the, in the undergraduate syllabus, and so introduce it continually, uh, it, it's, it's a continually, it's a live system, our, uh, mm -hmm. our undergraduate syllabus, and because we have so many courses, particularly in the final year, we're able to continually introduce uh, new things. Mm -hmm. And on the research side, how would you enhance that connection with the massive apl applicability of mathematics at the moment, and with, the, with that rich ground that is there? Well, well I think it <coughs> is um, very important uh, uh, to appreciate how uh, collegiate in, in many senses the, the department is. Uh, my role, uh, my role as I perceive is not as, a, as a, um, an imperial leader in the, in the exercise but very much somebody who uh, is committed to consulting widely with my colleagues and, and for us to, it, for it to emerge in a, in a collegiate fashion about what we think are the appropriate future directions in which, uh, in which to go. Are there any challenges that you see ahead? Oh, I see the challenges um, that I see ahead are twofold. One of them is about uh, managing to ensure, and they're, and they're essentially related. A real strength of this uh, department uh, is how, uh, at the research level, is how incredibly international uh, it is. There are people from all over the world. Uh, who come uh, not, not only in the, on the uh, permanent staff, but at the early career researchers, what we call the, the postdocs, the PhD students. And it's to ensure that we still maintain that openness and that opportunity to uh, get people to come from all over and uh, uh, contribute and feel welcome and feel included. Uh, that uh, aspect of diversity is really, really important. And then uh, and we are certainly working on this, and it, but, uh, the big challenge is to ensure that the um, uh, student body and uh, all aspects of the department, from the, from the very students up to the most senior uh, professors, are a properly diverse uh, group of uh, people. And it is a challenge uh, at all levels to ensure um, uh, or to encourage that uh, diversity and in inclusion. And we're very committed to that, and we are doing that. We are doing a wide range of things to try and uh, um, uh, enhance the diversity within the, uh, all cohorts within the student body. But that is one of our challenges. It's just really, it, it's to convince. I have been going around talking to all my um, uh, colleagues 
uh, about what they uh, like about the department, what they see about their challenges. And they all say it's a very friendly place, right? And it's just getting out that this is a friendly place and it's a great place to do maths and everybody here just loves, at every level, just loves doing maths. And so if you love doing maths, you will be welcome here and uh, you'll have a great time. And I think that's really the, one of the, to try and get over the perception of the incorrect definition of elitism and really just say that everybody is welcome here from all over the world, from every part, every background. Just the, all, the only qualification required is to really, really love maths. And I think that is the uh, thing I really, that's the challenge, just to communicate that piece of information. Yeah. And my final question, which you've partially answered already, is like, what are the strengths of the department or of the faculty at the moment? Well, I, I think the, the real strength of any uh, place is the people. And the, I think we have a fantastic cohort uh, of uh, people in this department at every stage. The um, people who support the, the laboratory technicians, the administrative, administrative staff, the support staff are all committed to this great uh, enterprise that we have and this great enterprise that we have is we are populated with colleagues who are really you know the, the senior academic staff are all really clearly love their, their subjects are really um, pushing back the boundaries of research while mentoring amazing cohort of early career researchers either at the postdoc or the um, PhD level, those, we have this amazing, so there's 60 faculty, we have 100 postdocs, 100 PhD students, this amazing community of, of serious uh, mathematical research going on, where some of the most important breakthroughs happen in these collegial coffee times at, uh, at 11 o'clock uh, in the various uh, uh, pavilions or at tea time around uh, four, and those moments of getting together you can be talking about um, uh, the, the teaching problem that you've uh, been, been considering and then you can talk about this thing you heard about a conference and then you can have that uh, breakthrough being written on the chalkboard or, or whatever. That's at that buzzing environment of enthusiasm for the uh, mathematics. And then combined with this absolutely world-class uh, teaching uh, that is available with an unparalleled level of breadth and depth of things that are done. And so that, and you can see, particularly as you come to part three and, and as a Give in some examples in the part two, the, the teaching is informed by this research and it's connected to the excitement of the research that is going on. Lee. And that collaborative, we're all in it together, we all love mathematics, is uh, the thing that really excites me.